All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, it's almost the weekend, and I'm going to be practicing a bit more legacy with my third option for this uh, Sunday's Super Qualifier. I'm, of course, talking about the deck on your screen right now, Mono Red Prison. So this is a deck that I've featured a couple of times before on the channel, but I think what's different this time is that I actually think it's an amazing choice for a big tournament, and I will tell you why. So at its core, Mono Red Prison is a deck that needs... First of all, Blood Moon to be relevant against the field, which is true right now. Eldrazi is at the top table. I expect many players to pick up Eldrazi uh, for this weekend in particular. Uh, Non-legacy players. Um, Eldrazi seems like the obvious, you know, somewhat easy to learn um, and give yourself a fighting chance deck. And the other thing that Runner Red needs is it needs the, the metagame to be predictable. It, you don't really want to run this deck into, you know, a field of a bunch of control decks with good mana bases, um, graveyard decks, storm combo decks, sneak and show decks, uh, mystic forge decks. Then, then all of a sudden, you don't, you can't focus your hate pieces enough, and you end up, you know, simply fall, uh, falling to the matchup uh, lottery. So right now, I think the metagame is pretty predictable with a lot of um, either fair blue black decks or reanimator. Basically, the only competitive unfair decks in the format, um, in the in the in the let's say tier one, what you would expect to top it every time, is going to be graveyard. So all of a sudden, the metagame is actually quite predictable. And that's why I want um, I want to give this deck a fair chance before deciding on my deck for Sunday. Um, Vexing Bobble, somewhat new tool, shuts down Force of Will. You played over Chalice, but you also played because Chalice will shut down the very very important Pyroblast, which is just how Things work these days with mainly Frog, but also Murktide Regent. I'm playing six Moons. I'm playing a couple of Grave Graveyard Hates in the main deck. I think that's okay. Um, going into a tournament that you're trying to win, I think having a couple of Hearses in the main deck is fine. Um, they're obviously insane against Reanimator. They do good work against other decks, getting rid of stuff like, you don't know, you know, another Goyf, Uro, um, whatever the case may be. Um, Pretty, pretty cool card. We have all our acceleration. Recently, we have added another of these double-faced cards. Um, sometimes the moat comes up, like destroy your opponent's only basic under a Blood Moon works. The unblockable thing is relevant. Um, but I'm also weary of... I don't really want to take too much damage, to be honest, because I am playing a One Ring deck. Um, Bombardier and Fable are like, you know, the bread and butter threats. I still like Rabble Master. I know a lot of people have removed them recently. Four copies of Pyrogoyf. They will be great over the course of a longer game. They are especially awesome in multiples or with the third chapter of Fable. Only a couple of Furies because Legacy does not have that many small creatures. Um, while it is a good card, it can do some awesome stuff with especially Broadside Bombardier. Um, I don't really want to run too many copies of that card. Uh, sideboard is trying to cement the graveyard matchup, uh, help with against any blue matchup. And then I'm basically, I basically have some you know, assorted removal spells here for when, let's say, my blood moves are bad, or let's say my unlicensers are bad. Then I just want, like, some solid cards to round out. Um, that is also solving some problems like, you know, Merit Lake, Schmirk Tide, uh, Ursa Saga, you know, small critters. So it's not like those cards are, you know, irrelevant, but they, the, their main purpose is to make sure I don't have terrible cards after sideboard, because this deck is very focused on the top of the metagame. All right, enough talking here. Let's uh, get to some games. All right, guys, quick message here. If you want to have access to my deck guides, my strategy articles, whether you want to pitch me a sweet deck to play on the channel, um, whether you want to look into coaching or simply just want to say thank you for the content I put out, please check out my Patreon below and become a Baron today. Now, let's get back to the games. All right, thanks for sticking with me. Um, round one is up here. I'm on the draw, which I don't really like. I do have a land and a bauble into some good stuff. I guess this is a keep. I will note this deck is not the best on the draw. That's just, you know, how the, how the cookie crumbles. Underground Sea Ponder. So, already... This is basically looking to be either Reanimator or Blue Black Midrange. And I mean, I guess there's some off chance we're, we're playing some other deck, but that's definitely what's on my radar. Um, yeah, another bobble. 
a very, very bad draw here because if this resolves, it's bad. If it doesn't resolve, I'm not sure I have the time to go bobble again next turn. So always, it's kind of like, you know, the Chalice of the Void uh, conundrum, I'll say. Also, I will note that since I played a land that cost me three life and I passed a turn, my opponent uh, has a good idea that I might not have more, you know, I don't have a mountain, that's for sure, right? So, yeah, let's see. One plays a Thoughtseize, so technically he technically can still be both of those Demir decks and some, you know, off off meta decks, but yeah, I'm I'm expecting to play against Reanimator here, I must say. Which, you know, with my overall 75 is decent. I'm ready for it. Um, but in this particular game, not looking great. I need my opponent to have a very reactive hand with, you know, force day, stuff like that. But I think if that was the case, my opponent would have just forced the bobble. So I think I need this game to drag on for a bit and my opponent to draw some of those cards um, while I draw, you know, stable develop mana development, etc. Um, yeah, great play by my opponent here. Thought ceasing first, seeing if land destruction would be great. So, yeah, this is quite... Terrible. So what I could do now is play City of Traders, play Vexing Bobble, Cycle a Bobble. I mean... Is that how I play Magic? I think the main problem with this situation is if I develop a city, whenever I draw another land, it dies. I can't play Chrome Box in that situation. And... Hmm... Spirit Guide is a one-shot. Would be a good draw, though. Maybe I don't have that choice. Maybe I have to do this. Play Bobble, Cycle Bobble, play, Ma uh, yeah, draw Magus. Very, very bad. Okay, looks like we're getting handily crushed here. I expect to get anime deaded here on the Pyrogoyf. Okay. Maybe my opponent also has Entomb and they're just slowing down here because why not? I think I'll just, yeah, I'll just spend this game learning which version my opponent's on, and then kind of moving on from here. Brainstorm doesn't tell me anything. I'm expecting to get entombed here, I must say. Let's see. Here comes entomb. Opponent puts a tracks in the yard, and the game is most likely just over. It's always kind of tough to just, you know, get smoked game one. I guess we learn about if there's anything to know about our opponent's deck. Um, we didn't really put up a fight here. Oh, double... Double uh, fanatic here, okay. That's okay, buddy. You got this. So, for obvious reasons, I want the hearse to control the graveyard. I want Pyroblast for frogs and force souls mainly, and then I want the macabs. My bad cards are Fury, and I actually don't want to lean on the moons. I think the moons are not that great against uh, troll in general, and just you know having the high variance is not. Is not ideal. Um, I'll also trim a Pyrogoyf mainly because of days and because I have nine good cards to bring in, so pretty standard there. Um, keeping all my mana sources despite, you know, being on the play with the Gemstone Caverns, that's fine. Uh, it's still it's just a colorless land that's totally reasonable. And uh, yeah, we're going into this game with seven Graveyard Hates and a uh, Quat Pyroblast, so on paper we should be fine, but in practice we are a Stompy deck, so let's see. Let's see, let's see. I expect my opponent to hedge a little bit with, you know, a little bit of Barragoyf, a little bit of Race and Borrower, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, who knows? Okay, so this hand has turn one, Rabel Master. Is weak to the graveyard. Eh, actually, I'm going to keep this. Um, I think if you mold a six and you want to draw, you know, some disruption, some clock, it's just not, I don't know. The odds are not in your favor, I'll say. So I'll rather take the gamble that my opponent has uh, gone back a little bit on the reanimator plan and 
I have this hand. I can even sustain a wasteland. I'm putting on a lot of pressure. So let's see. Imprinting the eruption here. Uh, should be good, right? Yes. Imprint disruption. Uh, eruption, rather. Here's Rebel Master. Maybe my opponent needs to force a will that card. Maybe my opponent is weak to it. Maybe my opponent just has, you know, land uh, a fetch land fatal push. Let's see. Maybe I get Thought Seized. I would actually like that. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> my, my opponent can get rid of a Pyrogoyf here. So, I don't know. Now, now Pyrogoyf can get reanimated. Maybe, maybe this is not what I wanted, but who knows. Let's see what I can draw here. Vexing a Buble. Hmm. Let's play that card out. I feel like I want to cycle this card. I would love to draw into some good three drop uh or two drop you know i have a lot of artifact hate uh i have a lot of hate here okay so i don't play the pyroblast out i don't think that would make it, um the city of traders out holding up the pyroblast yeah i mean i'm probably getting reanimated here and that's not good with two thoughtsies being in the stock reanimator deck lists i don't think it makes sense to play around it by you know imprinting the pyrogoyf It looks like we dodged a little bit of a bullet here. Rabble Master is a good draw. No Pyroblast up if I go for that one, though, but I still think it's good. Uh, yeah, let's play that. So either my opponent uh, just doesn't have much here and I get, you know, forced or whatever, or I'm just getting entombed, enemy dead. Okay, fair enough. My opponent didn't have much. So, why did I win this game? I won this game because I went turn one Rebel Master and my opponent couldn't answer it, basically. Um, which is not to be expected, but I think it's worth it with having a Pyroblast as well. That means I don't care about Frog. It means maybe I set up a good situation against a Force of Will later. Um, I don't know. It's, it's always tough. I don't think my hand was great, but I think it was good enough. And uh, this time, we were lucky to get there. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think I can do much here. Uh, when it comes to my configuration, like playing a card like Dead Gone is just it. The dead is not killing much. The gone is like, oh, bounce back my pyrogoyf if you thought seizes and reanimated. It's just not. It's not a game I want to prepare for, even though that situation is bad. It's just not something I want to prepare for because the price is too high, if that makes sense. So let's see. Okay, I, I love this hand. This hand has... Wow, okay. So double Graveyard Hate and double uh, Pyroblast is pretty good. I will say with the uh, Metamorphosis um, fanatic in the deck these days, might not be enough. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we're getting Thought Seized. My opponent likes that card. So hopefully the redundancy of having two Graveyard Hates, two Pyroblasts will help me in this game, but who knows. I feel like my opponent will take the Fairy Macabre here. And then I'll probably try and, try and play Unlicensed Hearse. My opponent also, if my opponent has turn one Thoughtseize. Oh, Hearse is taken, okay. Turn one Thoughtseize with Force of Will and the ability to produce a big creature. I mean, then it's just whatever. Uh, I feel like, am I always imprinting this, uh, smashing? I feel like that is almost, like, with me drawing the mountain, maybe that's true, so I want to play it out now. I mean, there's some world where, you know, this plays around a daze, or this lets me, you know, pyroblast twice and beat a, I don't know, force of will situation. And with me drawing the mountain, I don't think the price is that big. My opponent passes here. Okay, so looks like my opponent's on a graveyard, um, like in tomb hand, and they basically banked on me only having one graveyard hate. Here's in tomb. 
Okay, so my opponent is looking to force the issue and then kind of go for it again, I guess. But that basically just tells me that I need to do stuff in the meantime. Yeah, okay, my opponent needs to play through it like this. So discard that. Uh, maybe I, since I play Goif, I, I only exile the Atraxa because artifact instant. What is this? Oh, maybe I can disc uh, get rid of the sorcery as well. Yeah, let's do that. This reanimates the sorcery. Thinking about, you know, types for uh, future Pyrogoyf is, you know, useful. Let's see if we can draw a threat. That is exactly a threat. So now I don't have Pyroblast up, but I think that's okay. Here's a Broadside Bombardier. Am I willing to play Chrome Mox and deal two? I don't think that's very useful, so I'm just not going to do it. So now my opponent needs another set of Entomb Reanimate, which is possible. I mean, definitely possible. Let's see if this is a Reanimate. I don't think it is. I don't think my opponent's winning that race. Yeah, there's no Reanimate. No Revolt. Spirit Guide. Okay. Spirit Guide is a card. I think I'm supposed to deal 5 to my opponent here with a Spirit Guide. Mm, don't think I want days to be live, so I'll play like this. Chrome. Imprint. Red, red, red. Cast Spirit Guide. Deal 5. My opponent's at 8. I think this is how I want to play, because 8 is also a number that does not let my opponent reanimate, exactly reanimate on Atraxa. Uh, no, on Archon, rather. So let's see. Yeah, this is, uh, what, I w this is what I feared. Um, okay, well, that's just what happens sometimes. I had two Graveyard Hates. My opponent had um, uh, Thoughtseize and double Entomb, double reanimation. I mean, that's just how it goes. I think I did my best here, turning up the heat with the with the Bombardiers. I guess I could have sacrificed a Chrome Mox last turn. Um, but I didn't, so yeah, I don't know. So my opponent needs exactly Animate Dead. Which exactly <laughs> Oh, okay. So my opponent does not have Animate Dead. Okay, so I guess we still play. Fair enough. Uh my opponent's just setting up for or, okay, I see, I see. My opponent has reanimate. Okay, that's a good one. My opponent has reanimate, but if they go to two, I attack and, and kill them with, with Bombardier. So now I get reanimated down to two, two life, and I then need to draw another Bombardier to win the game. Here's Metamorphosis Fanatic going to two, animating control with lifelink. Okay, this was a cool game. Lots of small stuff happening. My opponent's hand being very focused on that plan out of the graveyard. And, uh... And, uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't beat it. That was just, uh... How it goes sometimes. Pretty cool situation. Uh, had double graveyard hate, double double pyroblast. My opponent just decided to blame mono black, which is... <laughs> which is super cool. Um, and I drew the bombardiers, which was super, which was super clutch. So now the two damage that I did not fling the Chrome Mox for ended up costing me. I would have played my Spirit Guide the following turn into days, though, which is maybe could have cost me. But it's funny that my opponent ends up at two life and I had that chance with the, with the Bombardier. Uh, yeah, who knows if it was optimal. It did not work out this time. On to the next one. All right, round two here. Let's see if we can get the, 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 lo the longest straw, straw here. I feel like the last one was uh, anybody's game, but uh, yeah, didn't didn't go our way in the end. Uh, the sand is interesting. Wow. So what I can do is I can go Chrome Mox, imprint Rabble Master, cast Vexing Bobble, play City of Traders, cast Vexing Bobble, cycle Vexing Bobble. That's one play. The other play is saying, I don't care about these Vexing Bobbles. I'll try and get Rabble Master going here as early as possible. Wow, that's a tough one. Because I feel like turn one, Rabble is the superior threat, but later, Bombardier is the superior threat. Yeah, very, very tough. 
It would also be a lot easier if this one ring was a red card. But it's not. I feel like having two baubles is... It's too much to, to you know, to ignore. Um, so I will do like this. Vexing bobble. Play another one and cycle it right away to use my mana. I'm weak to wasteland, but at least I'm going a little deeper into my deck here. No, I'm not weak to wasteland. Now I maybe even want to get wasted. I don't know. I probably don't want to get wasted. Um, because I can play turn two, the one ring. Okay. Nice underground C. Hmm. So. I feel like I should play like this. Play the one ring. Really hope I don't get entombed here. That would be unfortunate. I don't get entombed. I'll draw on my opponent's upkeep. Fable is a decent draw. It's just, you know, now I just want to jam threat after threat, having the one ring online. Let's see. Main face brainstorm. At least my opponent did not have Entomb. Then they would just put, you know, attracts into the graveyard or Archon or whatever. Main phase Brainstorm can mean a lot of things. It can mean my opponent's Landlight. Landlight holding up, I don't even know, Fatal Push. Then taking the draw before digging. Here's Underground Sea. Which is not a fetch, so either my opponent can have a troll here, my opponent can have a pseudo brainstorm lock. I'm I'm pretty happy I don't have to worry about bowmasters in this situation, actually. So Blood Moon is pretty good here. I'm actually leaning towards playing that card out. Um it is worse against you know troll, but I think it's a good question to ask my opponent at this stage. Of course it will shut off, they shut off. Let's see. Troll into Swamp will, you know, be incredibly strong here for my opponent. Let's see. If my opponent just takes the turn here, I really like my spot. My opponent did not do anything in response to the moon. Here's the troll. Troll for basic Swamp. Reanimating the troll is, you know, a good play. It's way better for me than... Uh, Having to worry about big creatures, so let's see if the troll enters the battlefield here. I really hope so. Please reanimate the troll, and I will handily win that race. Blood Moon is basically saying, you're done playing blue cards, but <laughs> the bad news is my deck is losing to the, to the, to the black cards, as we just saw in the previous match. It was, uh, it was not fun. Here's Animate Dead, which is way better for the opponent. Okay. Animate Dead. My opponent cannot cast any spells here, so... I'll go to 14. Draw. Land is, you know, not bad, not good. Um, so, Bombardier, kill the troll looks like a good play. Bombardier, kill the troll. Not bad. Let's go. Broadside. Get in there. Uh, sack the One Ring. Kill off Troll. I will now play which land. I think the Blood Moon is just staying in play, so I think it doesn't really matter here. I'm not using this mana. Maybe this just, it just enters untapped and it doesn't matter. Okay, fair. Fair enough. So now, how does my opponent deal with Broadside Bombardier? Who knows? Oh, Basic Island. Okay, well. <laughs> there is that. Um, okay, Psychic Frog is acceptable. Let's see. Can deal 6 damage to that card with 
the one ring. I don't think that's bad. Two, three, four days, hard cast. Nope, it's not a thing. Might as well play the land. Let's see. <laughs> Excuse me. So the one ring. Draw. Spirit guide. Does that help me do anything? It does not. Attack, but my opponent's a 16. And then I will... I think it's good to one ring the Psychic Frog. Basically force my opponent to discard the whole hand. Heal 6. Discard 5 cards. Yeah, I like that. Not sure what the opponent's thinking about here. This creature has Menace. But yeah, I've 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 seen that before. New cards are hard. I've definitely made my share of mistakes against with and against new cards. Magic is definitely a complicated game. So back to back matchup against Reanimator here is both you know a little bit frightening. Oh yeah, <laughs> have to try. Back-to-back uh, -back matchup against Reanimator is super scary because the game can be over in a in a split second, you know? So, it's definitely something to think about um, going into an important tournament. So, I've definitely taken note of this. So, kill the frog. Well, maybe. Or, mind twist my opponent for five. I've already played my land. Let's pass. It's funny that I have the third ring even. So I'm not going to get hit by a frog before I basically have my opponent dead, which is, you know, pretty awesome. It's a tough decision for the opponent here. If they have a good hand, they just let this die. If they have a bad hand, they try and, yeah, you know, make the frog sort of survive here. Yeah, okay. So, five cards getting discarded. The Psychic Frog. Making it a 6-7. Unable to deal damage next turn, though. Um, while I can play another ring. And a 3-drop on top of that. So, I'm doing pretty well for myself here. Maybe if my opponent draws something like... Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, let's see how many forces and dazes I've I've caught with that bauble. I guess now it's time to find out. Lots of stuff getting discarded. Lots of life loss cards, uncastable, and push is bad because of Blood Moon, so. All right, opponent goes all in on Psychic Frog. I like my position a lot. I have Blood Moon in play. I guess that doesn't do a whole lot. Bobble is decent, and I have more stuff coming, most importantly. Good old Broadside getting in there. Opponent passes the turn. That seems very reasonable. I will play Land. I will play the One Ring. I will draw a magic card. Magus of the Moon, that's nice. Um, sure. I will attack for two. I will play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Or should I land destruct my opponent? To never have more black mana. Maybe that's better. I'm trying to ask myself how I actually lose this game, and uh, this could be the answer. Let's see if Hardcast Days can get me here. That would be kind of funny. 
podcast days. We've also reached the point where maybe I can broadside away the bobble here on my opponent. Is that true? I think it's true. My opponent goes to 11. My opponent is done casting black spells. I'm drawing extra cards off ring, and I have a deal six in the ring. Yeah, this is this is tough for the opponent. Still can't do anything with the frog. It's just what happens against the ring trigger. Hierogoyf, nice. Nice. Yeah, okay, this is incredible. So let's see, how much damage is this? Bombardier and Bombardier getting in there. That's my opponent down to seven, and then... Okay, okay, okay. So let's cast um, Broadside. Let's cast Fable before getting rid of the Chrome Box. Let's try and put my opponent to seven. All right, so we took him one against Reanimator. That always feels great. And now we have the same cyber plan as last time. We add nine good cards. We remove some situational cards. It's always kind of funny when I win thanks to Blood Moon. Well, partially. And then the first thing I do is sideboard them out. But I think they're just simply just two high variants overall. Furies are not very strong against that deck. Hard removal for Frog is in, and more Graveyard interaction while still, um, you know, being able to control the stack and Psychic Frog. All right, all right. Up a game against Reanimator. Let's see what they can do this time. Maybe it's my turn to win a close one. Yeah, I really like this deck. I must say. I will for sure uh, add it to my Patreon just in time for the, the Super Qualifier in case anybody's interested in um, playing an Ancient Tomb strategy into the metagame. I might do some you know final tweaks before, but it's going to look incredibly similar to what I'm playing here. So definitely keep an eye out for that one if you care. Um, I mean, this hand has a Pyroblast, two mana sources, and a Macabre, so, I mean, it's an easy keep. Um, then we just hope that things develop from here with, you know, a couple of lands in my future. That would be awesome. I think my worst card right now is a Rebel Master when it comes to the Chrome Box. When it's on a single mulligan, let's see if we can catch them going all in on some reanimation stuff. Let's see if Mr. Thoughtseize. No, Mr. Thoughtseize did not did not populate. Turn one ponder respecting Blood Moon proactively. Like that. Just solid solid fundamentals here shown by the opponent. You don't want to lose the Blood Moon twice. Opponent likes the cards. It's funny, I'm kind of hoping to draw Basic Mountain. I draw Bombardier. So now... I have to ask myself, am my opponent... Does my opponent ever base a Chrome Mox? I mean, the answer could be yes, but I'm not going to respect it here. I'm going to imprint a Rebel Master as I talked about, then I'm going to go... Tapped, which could be bad, but let's see. It's mainly how much do I respect days? How much am I willing to um, tell my opponent about my hand, basically? Thoughtseize, okay. Thoughtseize is scary. If, if Thoughtseize takes out the Fairy Macabre, it's very scary. My opponent is now on double basic, so then they showed that... They're willing to play around Blood Moon proactively, which is, I mean, all you really can do, um, which is fine. And that might lead to some, a little bit of, you know, mana issues for my opponent when it comes to double spelling. And they're playing around a Ghost Blood Moon, much like I've talked about in the past with cards like Days. Um, 
if this is in your sideboard, your opponent still might play around it and you get value from it, you know, the phantom days, which is, it's just good to be aware aware that you can kind of cut some corners and uh, get a little bit greedy. Oh, this is, this is interesting. Getting rid of the rabble master. Huh. Maybe my opponent has a reanimation. No, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. Okay, pretty good draw here. I will take three damage and play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Fable is the card that it's the best to get going as early as possible, since I'm not sacrificing anything to the Bombardier anyway. Getting in for two is not as valuable as, you know, starting the chapters here. Um, could get dazed. That's just how it goes. But I don't think waiting around against a potential Wasteland deck is how you play. Okay, Force of Will on my... Wait a minute. I put in pitch days. Okay. I I really don't know what that means. Uh but I guess we will find out. There can be some incredible corner case like land murktide situation where if you days back. Oh never mind. That's the reason. Okay, okay, okay. I love that. So fanatic. Entering the battlefield as a 4-4, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, this is what I talked about in the previous match, or maybe this one, I, I don't remember, but me and new cards, I mean, I'm terrible with new cards, so seeing these kind of play patterns, not gonna be easy. So now, what I don't like about um, my opponent's play is if they knew they had a, uh, a, a Fanatic coming, they really don't care about the Rebel Master, because the Rebel Master is a must-attack into a 4-4 lifelink, but this card can actually... Maybe I drew this after. Ah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe I drew that after. Who knows? Here's Fairy Makov. Not exactly my favorite card here. Broadside Bombardiers. Can only deal two damage with Chrome Mox, so... Looks like I'm gonna be taking some damage here. And actually, that card... It's just something that says, well, I'm still a 4-4 four -four lifelinker. You can have all the unlicensed hearses, all the fairy macops in the world, all the pyroblasts. I'm gonna, you know, reign supreme here against your mediocre beatdowns. Let's see if that's true, though. I need something at 2 mana to... to like, 2 or more mana, like, you know, hearse, spirit guide, etc. Then I can kill off the the, the Fanatic, and then I'm doing fine for myself. Um, for now, I'm okay taking damage. So, it looks like... Okay. I put in Mills over Troll and Ponders. Unclear if that was the correct order, who knows? So, my opponent is definitely keeping the ball rolling. I do have a Pyroblast for defense when it comes to, you know, Frog. I will be very bad against more... Fanatics, more Baragoyf, stuff like that. Which is, I mean, that's a super scary prospect. All right, my opponent likes the cards, unfortunately, passes. Can I draw a three drop? Can I do it? I can draw an uncastable four drop instead. Yeah, this doesn't look good. Am I getting miracled again? No, no miracle, okay. It's one of my biggest problems with, you know, some stock list running around with a lot of rings, a lot of pyrogoyfs, a lot of initiative creatures. It's like really heavy on four drops. And I think one of this deck's weaknesses is, um, here's Baragoyf. Okay, my opponent basically goes mono black on me here and just laughs at my hand. So random thing to learn here is I think my opponent should have started with the Ponder. It would keep me guessing more when it comes to a Psychic Frog, potentially, as my opponent's last card. But of course, not uh, not a simple game we're playing, and I draw another Pyroblast. Yeah, now, now I should pack it in, right? Let's see. I, I, I have to chum block here. Yeah, it's terrible. So I need to draw land there, kill off. Um, then I could have killed off both creatures. Because then I go Pyrogoyf, kill Fanatic, attack, fling the Pyrogoyf onto the Baragoyf, and all of a sudden I'm winning the game. Okay, well, that was, that was tough. Um, my opponent did a good job of ignoring my sideboard plan there, but I had, I had a chance. 
Um, yeah, it's also annoying that Pyrogoyf can never kill a uh, Baragoyf. That's just how the Goyf, the Goyf world works. All right, game three on the play. So that means on the play, I have more options to, you know, get the job done with some fast clock. Um, my vexing bobble is going to be slightly better. Maybe I can run away with the game, basically. Where I, when I'm on the draw, I'm basically the reactive deck nine out of ten times. So pretty excited for for my odds here. But it is it is it is it is close margins, especially with that great plan that my opponent just showed of of big black. Um, black creatures. That is very, very tough for this deck. So let's hope my opponent draws the side of the deck that wants to go, you know, in Tomb, Reanimate, Psychic Frog, and stuff like that, and we can match it with good old Graveyard Hate and Pyroblast. Opponent might make some adjustments here. Either way, it's good. Uh, it's good practice to let your opponent wait a little bit, make them think a little bit. So, for, from my perspective now, it, I'm, my first line of thought is, "Oh, my opponent is not one day is on the draw." That's like what the adjustment's about. But who knows? Who knows? Oh, this hand is cool. I can go turn one hearse, which I don't really care about getting forced, and then I can play from there. I will take a ton of damage this game. I will say that. So, I'm hoping my opponent is on some. Tomb shenanigans. Ancient Tomb, Unlicensed Hearse, Resolves, Pass the Turn. Fairy Macabre is now kind of redundant and doesn't do a whole lot. I'm going to take 5 damage and try and play Fable next turn. This is live. Very macabre. A terrible draw. Here's Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I'm hoping my opponent's holding up consigned to memory and not, <laughs> and not, you know, Hydroblast days. Okay. Looks like my opponent is on the lookout for, you know, you might as well, if you're going to brainstorm here end of turn anyway, you d can just do it in response here. That's the first thing. If your hand is kind of soft to, you know, anything, you want to look for Force of Will. I like this. Okay, my opponent does have Dazed. I like it. So, I do get Dazed here. That's very unfortunate. And, and as I alluded to, Ferrimacop, a horrible draw. My life total is slowly but surely going away. This could end very poorly because of all the damage I'm taking. So now do I get rid of my opponent's Yard proactively? I do. I play Pyrogoyf, so I, I'm not sure I should. My opponent has instant, instant. Yeah, I don't care about that. All right, so let's play another Fable and hope my opponent has another Daze. That would be pretty awesome. If I get forced here, I'm actually scared, which is funny. I like this fetch. Please be a Daze. Then I kind of get the a little bit of time walk action going and. I still get my Fable. So I can pay for the days. Pay, yes. Resolve, yes please. I get a 2-2. Two, two. So now my opponent has instants in the yard that I want to get rid of end of turn. I'm just making a note for myself. Because now with three instants, I might as well grow the hearse. Maybe that logic was the one I should have applied to begin with. My opponent is on zero lands. I can turn these two macabs into two new cards. I can even keep a macabre and get rid of a ring. Is that better? Who knows? Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. The the selection or the filtering rather from Fable here is is gonna be is gonna be valuable. My opponent's thinking about the situation. Which land drop to make? Am I wastelanding my opponent? Which I really can't uh, recommend in the face of a mana generating shaman and, you know, just a clock in general. 
So my opponent needs to develop their own mana here and get back into this game and try and match what I'm doing here. Um, graveyard might be out of the question because of Hearse, but they showed a good plan um, the other game with all the black creatures. So let's see. Fatal push on that one is annoying. I'll say that. that that's fine. So now I'll get rid of some stuff. I'll get rid of a push in a daze. Draw. Fable goes to chapter two. Let's see. Smashing is not a good draw at all. I mean, my hand is just bad, so... Uh, let's go... Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be too much life loss with the rings. I'm just going to get rid of those two. Okay. Bombardier is not bad. Not bad, not bad. Not great. Not bad. Let's play Broadside Bombardier. Let's play... Um, oh, crap. I think I could have Stone Rain my opponent there. Didn't my opponent show Basic Island earlier? No, I think I missed a great window for a good Stone Rain here. Place... Let's see. Underground C, draw three. Maybe, maybe I didn't see it this game. Okay, well, I should have, I should have thought about that for sure. Um, so, I think I'm playing the Smashing here. Getting in there, passing. There's no, you know, risk of my opponent going fetch Murktai, so I don't have to be proactive with all unlicensed Hearse. I don't think my, my opponent is playing Murktai. I think with the black creatures coming out, most, most players are, are looking into those. I'm also, I've also made that swap. At least I love Murktide, but now, now I'm trying out the Fanatic in that slot. It's been pretty good so far. Now I can, e if my opponent is, you know, nothing of note, I can easily take the turn and, you know, get rid of um, Day's Delta before my turn. So I guess I do that now. Might as well grow it. Day's Delta, sure. My opponent has five cards in hand. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what I can draw. Can I draw anything useful? I draw a Sundering Eruption, which is a, you know, which is a Stone Rain right now. It's done nothing. Um. So what happens if I Bombardier the Frog... Back for two, deal five to the frog. My opponent has to discard four cards. Um, I feel like my opponent will do that, but I also feel like my alternative is worse. What's my alternative? It's something to do with... Hmm. How much graveyard hate? I can remove four cards from my opponent's graveyard with Hearse and Macabre. But if I'm... Hmm. Am I attacking with Hearse? I don't think so. I need... This, this, this turn is incredibly complicated. Because I I I want to I want to you know I want to try and beat my opponent here, but that's going to be very hard. If the reflection sticks around, the next turn I can make a second bombardier. That second bombardier gets in for two as well, so that puts my opponent to uh ten. Then it can fling one reflection and one bombardier. That's ten damage. Oh, so I think I found lethal over a couple of turns here if I can fade lethal from my opponent. Mm. Let's see. Two damage from the Bombardier now. Next turn, make a copy. Let's say my opponent cannot interact. Let's like, that's what this play is about. My opponent does not interact. Um, attack with both. One of them flings the Reflection. Three drop. One of them flings, flings the other Bombardier. Three drop. So that's five plus five. Is that really how it goes down? Okay. And the problem is... 
My opponent will go up to six cards in hand. That's seven damage in the air. So, so I can't use my Ancient Tomb. This is so tough. Um, I actually think what I want to do here is exile these in advance because I want to look like I'm weak to the frog getting flying, basically. Let's see if that works. Play. Pass. Yeah, this is tough. If my opponent has some relevant cards in hand, basically all I can hope for is my opponent has some way to try and produce a big creature out of the graveyard. And then I can get them with Fairy Macabre, untap, and do the final 14. Let's see if it works out. It's a plan. It's a plan that folds to almost anything. But right now, I'm selling my best story that I cannot beat Reanimation because I cannot... Well, I have to worry about a Flying Frog first. So now I'm leaving myself open for Reanimation. That's the story I need to tell here. Let's see. Let's see if that works. The opponent is discarding cards as I was hoping for. That's why I proactively got rid of two from the hearse. My opponent wants to set up a situation where they can kill me over two turns. And I'm hoping that they get greedy and go for reanimation out of the graveyard so I can, so I can finish them off. I'm not sh Yeah, doing the math here is not simple. Um, so I'm basically just hoping my opponent does not see that, right? Please discard like a track saying go for animate dead or something. That would be the dream. This is pretty exciting. Lots of life loss in this game. Did I just... I think I took 11 this game. And now my opponent is looking to finish me off in two swings. While I'm trying to mask that I can finish my opponent off in one swing. Pretty exciting times. I'm a bit sad about... You know... That it was... I, need, I think I needed to play this out. I think that was just a good play. Um, but it also says a lot about my hand, right? And, and this card is, should be very high on my opponent's list, but I'm trying to make them, you know, sleep a little bit at the wheel and, and get punished. I'm excited for this one. I like that my opponent is taking their time here. The suspense. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Come on, opponent. Which is your worst card? Or best card to put in the yard and then start reanimating. Which is your best card? There's also a little bit of rules tech stuff. By the way, this artwork is so good. They blow the mirror breaker, and then once the mirror breaks, you see yourself in the mirror. You don't always like what you see in the mirror, but, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, so there's a little bit of rules stuff, like with the good old Delver. Delver Flip Delver used to be a zero drop back in the day, but they changed the rules at some point that um, the flipped stuff would have the same um, number of mana cost as the uh, the front side. So a card like Hunt Master of the Fells no longer you know, on the other side when it's Ravager or whatever it's called. A uh, Ravager of, of the Fells. It doesn't die to Explosives for zero. It doesn't die to Pernicious Seed for zero. So now it's just the same, but it doesn't really say that. So, I mean, there is some chance. I'm saying there's a chance here. My opponent plays as well. I can't win. So I have to put out all the traps that I can for my opponent to play suboptimally or miss a, a, a detail. And then we hope that the opponent bites. That's, how, that's what magic is sometimes when you're losing. You have to give yourself a chance to win. Under City Sewers here, my opponent's trying to hit home. Um, oh, they keep the card. I don't like that. Unless it's, it was a reanimation spell and the opponent wants to draw into it. So now the opponent has to discard one more card. Then give flying. Because I want, I want this reflection to look like it's a chump blocker. But it's really not. It's a card that lets me attack for lethal next turn. <clears throat> Psychic Frog, what's it going to be? I don't like that my opponent kept the card. Unless it's something like, you know, a new frog or something. That would be amazing as well. Because of, you know, double menace creature getting past it. 
Okay, so the land is getting discarded. I think my opponent's thinking about... No, they're not. Never mind. They did not play a land. They could have discarded everything and put me to two, so the tomb was not usable. But that was wishful thinking. Oh, crap. Five. Uh, I wonder what the last card is. Can't really beat much if my opponent plays as well. Also, I just noticed my hearse is 6-6. Six, six. Does that change anything for my opponent? Let's say I crew it with Fable, or Reflection, rather. Get in for 6, get in for 8. I don't know. Another dream I have is my opponent has a Force Trouble left in hand and is drawing into a random blue card. That is also a dream. Let's see. I'm at four. Okay. I accept. What can my opponent have for one black? Fatal push doesn't work, right? Yeah, fatal push doesn't work without a revolt. Wonder what this is. Shuffling the library, passing. Mm. Okay. Let's make a copy of Broadside Bombardier. Let's attack for four. Looks like my opponent did the math here. With the GG's. And then I can fling for 5 plus 5. Hmm, not... Yeah, I don't know. I, I gave myself a chance to win here, and then my opponent realized too late. I think that's just how it goes. But yeah, I was pretty happy to, to thread the needle there. Um, Alright, that's cool. So we faced off against a couple of reanimator decks. Let's see if we can hit something different. All right, round three here, playing Mono Red. My opponent showed a Yorion as a companion, and I think I like the One Ring too much to put this hand away, even though I will need to draw a red card for it to be cast turn two, but that would be... No, I don't. Wait. Let's see. Um... Okay, yeah, this is fine. If I draw a red card, I can consider going turn one Rabble Master. Also, we don't know if our opponent is, you know, Death and Taxes type deck or not, so let's see. Bird of Paradise. Okay, so maybe some Nadu action. I like having Fury in my deck, I gotta say. Um. Hmm. So I can't go turn one Rabble. And go turn one Chrome Mox and then Vexing Bobble. It's not ideal, but I think it's okay. So imprint the Rabble. Play Mountain. A vexing bauble. If my opponent has an ending for it, I can cycle. So I think it's okay. I really want to clear the way for Force of Will. Uh, well, for the ring against Force of Will. So I also like and I don't have to play out my City of Traders that turn. I can do it next turn, ramping into the ring. There's Abundant Growth. I used to love to play with that card. Poor Man's Arkham's Astrolabe. There's Tundra, so yeah, some Bant, Nadu, Shenanigans, maybe. Collector Oof, that's an amazing card. Wow, so I think my opponent's on a like a Green Sun Zenith package and just randomly drew Collector Oof, which is incredible here. Wow. Shutting off my Chrome Mox, even. Shutting off my One Ring. Oh, Magic is sometimes a brutal mistress. Fable is a decent draw on my side of the table. Let's see if we get forced. It's good because it's good in itself, and it's good because it uh, cycles away some completely dead artifacts. Well, at least until I draw, you know, Pyrogoyf, um Fury-type cards. Brutal stuff, getting hit by the turn 2 Collector Oof in the Legacy. Here's Teferi bouncing the Goblin Shaman, I can imagine. Yeah, very cool. Even though the Shaman, the treasure doesn't do anything. Yeah, wow. 
Electro was really, really strong against this deck when you when you played before I've done anything, you know, meaningful. Let's say I have stuff in play, I don't care about the card, but proactive oof is brutal. Baraka's getting surveilled. I have three mana to work with. I'm seeing some more cards. I play plenty of, you know, Rebel Master type cards to kill the Teferi. I mean, this is not over. What a draw. So Fury, in case I can find a red card, kills Teferi, Oof, and um and birds. That is incredible. So let's get rid of Chrome and uh, is it City of Traders? Maybe. Chrome and City of Traders. I think that's okay. So I need to find a red card, which I do. Wow. So now what I could do is bait with you know, which card do I want to bait with? Bait with Blood Moon, then play Yuri. Maybe that's good. Blood Moon, Land, Pitch Fury. Let's try. Blood Moon, Land, Yuri. Let's see if my opponent has the Force of Will. They don't have. They don't have the Force of Will. Wow. Then I. Get rid of some stuff here, including Teferi Oof Birds. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, now my, my stuff is unlocked and I have a ring coming. And my opponent only has, you know, one rainbow land to play around with. And now I'm back in the game. I needed to, <laughs> I needed to turn like that to get back in the game. It's so funny, I was so far behind that I needed the best turn imaginable to be back in the game. I'm not even I'm not even crushing my opponent after that turn, I'm just back in the game, so. Super, super interesting stuff. Next turn, I have mana to cast the One Ring, which is a must deal with. I'm disrupting with Blood Moon. My Fable is doing something, a high potential for the future. Looks like my opponent cannot use the red mana for anything aside from, you know, colorless obligations like putting Yori onto hand, stuff like that. Um, my opponent can only cast Prismatic Ending for two with how things stand. Here's Dryad Arbor, which is, I believe, a, uh, yeah, now a mountain, a green mountain, maybe even. Green Mountain 1-1. One, one. Draw. Uh, Sundering Eruption. Okay, we might get to that later. Let's play the One Ring. I guess I should have played it, because I'm under a Blood Moon. And there's like a non-0% chance my opponent plays Days. Yeah, that, 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 I, could have, I could have played that a bit more safe, I think. Let's draw right away. I will play my land drop. And then I'm going to pass the turn. Blood Moon was not a good draw. Let's see if my opponent can use their colored mana for any... I mean, they can, right? Because otherwise they would have put Yor onto hand. So here's something. Okay. Well, let's quickly see. I do have the third mountain in here, so that's fine. My opponent, Besage, used the Blood Moon now. Has a turn with access to all mana before I drop a new one. So yeah, scary, scary stuff here. Let's see. Don't natural order me, bro. Don't natural order me, bro. Okay. Green Sun Zenith is acceptable, but I'm sure it's also going to be very strong. I was about to say, if my opponent has a Leovald in that deck, things are not looking as good as they, they, they otherwise would have. Leovald it is. So here's Magus, which is kind of funny. Which one is better? Um, hmm, let's think. I think I'm just playing both anyway, so I might as well play the Blood Moon at first. Is that bad logic? Yeah, maybe it's bad logic because the opponent has plows and stuff. Play out those boys. Pass. Let's see. Am I willing to double block with two Magus if my opponent sends the Leovolt? Good question. My opponent does have access to plow. Via the abundant growth. I guess now they don't have. Other question is, am I willing to draw one extra card on the opponent's turn while 
ramping up the life loss from the ring. Who knows? Going and shuffles. Makes a lot of sense in this spot where not a lot of cards are live. The Oriental Hand also makes sense. My opponent will need a Plains or Island in order to actually cast Yorion, but once they do, I'm in trouble. I feel like I'm supposed to draw an extra card. Make a copy of Magus. That could come in handy with stuff like, you know, Broadside Bombardier, so it's a good play. Lose a couple of life points. Draw Spirit Guide. Not amazing. Can I get my opponent to be scared of Fury? No, I don't think so. so. Let's go Fable. So Fable and Reflection are actually like some combo when it comes to my mana later. So if I get a little bit of time, I can do good things. Um, let's pass this one. Maybe... Casting that spirit guy was not good. Maybe I was supposed to cycle that for Fable next turn. Let's see. Unclear. I'm really trying to emphasize winning this game and it, you know, before the ring <laughs> kills me, basically. I guess I have four bombardiers in my deck. And two more rings, so little bit of out there yeah i i should have i should have i should have hung on no well because i'm not i'm not digging with fable anyway because of leovold i don't know <laughs> so tough let's lose two life let's play another fable that's so funny i'm not gonna do that Gonna play another Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Passing the turn. And then from next turn, I can start the, you know, build your own Splinter Twin type situation. Where the th this Fable goes to third chapter, and then I can kind of do good things on the opponent's end step. So which one am I... Yeah, I think I'm looking for a, a copy of this one because I can actually get one more mana this way. For free, kind of, so. Here's Bombardier, which is absurd right now. Uh, so let's go Broadside Bombardier. With the play speed my opponent's playing at here, I think I'm doing a good job here of, you know, my opponent just accepted everything I'm doing here, so I just assume the coast is clear. Um, what if I send these boys, including the spirit guide, maybe even including the magus? Hmm. Maybe even including the magus. So, getting three treasures is pretty awesome. Yeah, my, my opponent just got wrecked by the second Blood Moon even more than the first one, I guess. Okay, so let's quickly just look what's going on here. It's probably some Bant deck with just a Leovold and a single Bayou in it, with Yorion. It does not look like a Nadu deck. Um, it does look like a deck where Pyroblast is amazing against. Um, I will also say my opponent showed enough small creatures that I'm considering these boys. Uh, which cards are bad here? Unlicensed versus bad. Yuri was amazing against what my opponent had going on there, but is that, you know, durable? I think Magus is not good, mainly because of... Uh, my opponent can float and go plow. Maybe I actually want to get rid of all all moons here. I actually think that's sick. Because my opponent's going to be very, very careful. I want all of these cards. All of these cards are, you know, potential bangers against the deck. And I have to remove two more cards if I go for this setup. 
Uh, maybe these fiery confluences aren't that great. Yeah, let's just play like this. I think this is good. Some big control deck with, you know, um, what's it called? Abundant Harvest, lots of basics, mana accelerants. I don't think leaning on Blood Moon is reliable, even though it just took down the game, which is always a fun, a fun one. But I'm trying to weigh more, you know, give more weight to my, you know, my my theory, my instinct, rather than what just happened. So let's see if that's smart or not. Huh. On the draw here, up a game. Yeah, I mean, let's go. These are fine. Another hand that's weak to collect the roof. I can't believe I drew that Fury last game. Fury was so good. Getting rid of Teferi, Oof, and Birds of Paradise. So strong. Good old Serum Mana, two for three. This hand, I'll probably go, you know, Chrome, Pitch Fable, play Bauble. A land. I'm trying to think about if Pyroblast up is going to be relevant. Maybe I actually pitched the Pyrogoyf now. So, Chrome Mox, pitch Pyrogoyf, play Bauble. What if my opponent forces? Do I want to force back? Yes. I think the answer to that is yes. So now I go Vexing Bauble. Past the turn. Also, in case I get oofed, like randomly, I can cycle my bauble. So that's kind of the point about this play. Aside from the pyroblast, let's see. Don't oof me, bro. Don't oof me, bro. <laughs> okay, you oofed me, bro. But it's funny, like last time we draw into the soul land so we can keep playing magic. That's cool. So yeah, my opponent also picked <laughs> picked up on that one. So let's see, Cydia Traders is awesome. Which is the best one here? I think it's just Fable, since Oof is a good blocker for um, random goblins. So let's try and go Fable here. I'm actually I'm willing to fight over it. Let's see what my opponent says about that. Uh. Table resolves. Another, another happy customer. Well, maybe. Who knows? Let's see how this match ends. But another, another cool dude to add to the to the viewers list. Always in the market for those, of course. So the thing about Fable is it's good for you know filching your hand, but the treasures off the goblin doesn't do anything. So it's like kind of a long term plan. You know, flipping into the into the mirror breaker at some point, or the reflection rather, so. Just like last game, that's what we're hoping for. Opponent respects Blood Moon a lot here, it's just good to get confirmation that that's the case. Prismatic ending on that one is... acceptable, I mean, that's not the end of the world. I got a 2-2 out of the deal, opponent cannot attack, opponent cannot block, that's fine. I can play another one, most importantly. So, let's see. Now I go... Pack with Goblin Shaman. Hmm, Mountain. Mountain is an interesting draw. That I think I should... Play. Let's see. Play a Mountain. I'm trying to think of the advantage here of not playing the Mountain. If I play the mountain out, I don't have four mana next turn, no matter what. But I could have... Okay. And I've uh, convinced myself to not play a land. Another Fable hits the board, and I have Simeon Spirit Guy Pyroblast if things are tough. If things are not tough, I'm... 
I'll just keep attacking with those boys. I will say it can get kind of scary if my opponent gets to four mana. Green Sun Zenith can do some stuff. Leovold is good, but again, Pyroblast takes care of that one. Unusable treasure, unusable chrome here. The oof has collected them all, taken them back to its cave and showing them off there. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, and then it's hanging all the artifacts in the on the you know wooden stuff, the roof. Yeah, that's sick. Green Sun Zenith for three, so. Uro, Nadu. I hope not. I hope this is not a Nadu deck. I hope this is kind of a, an old school version. But let's see. Let's see about that. My opponent could proactively say, "No, that doesn't make sense." With Oof in play, the ring is not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you. I see you, opponent. So, the good news for me about Uro is. Well, maybe we should start the bad news. The bad news is this this card is going to be something I have to worry about for the whole game, right? But our Pyroblast can hopefully, once my opponent finally assembles five cards in the graveyard, Pyroblast can hopefully take care of it, but you never know. My opponent puts a card in the yard, develops another land. No attack here, I imagine. So the life buff is, is annoying. Can we draw anything sick? We sure could. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So the stupid thing is I actually like my hand now. <laughs> and I want to keep my hand. Um, Maybe the spirit guide can go. Let's see. So now I want to go. Yeah, the spirit guide should be able to go because I go blow two, play land, play bombardier, fight over it. And then the spirit guide, and then I'm, I start getting the treasures here, so. Okay, I guess I go discard spirit guide. Draw into gemstone caverns. So let's play like this. Play land. Hold up the basic, just good, you know, good habits. Here's Broadside Bombardier, which is a force to be reckoned with. And we even get to counter a force here. So pretty awesome exchange, all in all. Um, so now attacking here is awesome. Killing off Oof with a treasure, I guess. Getting two more treasures. Back in for four. But I have to beat Uro next turn, I guess. I like getting the Rebel Master into play, even though I'm using two quote unquote petals on it. But it's better than to give my opponent more draws to find, you know, force blue card or whatever. Um I will say I cannot kill Uro right now, but I can finish it off. Um, after it has blocked. So right now I'm soft to Uro plus Plow, but other than that, I'm in pretty good shape. Also, the Fable is flipping, so my opponent has more stuff to worry about. So I guess don't Plow me, bro. Don't Plow me, bro. Let's see how many types if I draw Pyrogoyf. Creature, land, instant, artifact. Okay, so funnily enough, my opponent... That's kind of cool. My opponent has Dryad Arbor here. That's actually pretty good for Menace um, purposes off of the Uro. Here's a land. So my last my opponent's last card, I hope, is not a Plow. <clears throat> Can we get a good draw in Crunch Time? No. Ancient Tomb is not a good draw in Crunch Time. So now I have to attack with everybody. Only question is, do I kill the Dryad Arbor before blocks? That is very, very possible. Create a treasure. Because I don't want my opponent to double block the Bombardiers. So that's just how that works, right? 
All right, guys. Let's see. Um, boom. Sacrificing a treasure, killing Dryad Arbor. So that now, if Ur blocks Rebel Master, it's a trade. If Ur blocks one of the others, my opponent's taking a bunch of damage. I'm trying to put my opponent between a rock and a hard place. Now, Uro, if Uro blocks a 2-2, two, two, my opponent takes 2, 4, 10, 11. That is pretty good for me. Unfortunately for me, my opponent has a lot of high-impact spells in that deck, but this is the best I can do. Very, very important number that I get to 6-2 on the rabble. Okay, it looks like my opponent is willing to trade there and take a bunch. But the alternative was apparently worse. Uh, trying to think here about the land drop. I think the Ancient Tomb land drop is fine, but I'm hanging on to the Gemstone cameras next turn. There's something about, you know, fables down the line. Um, things can obviously change if I draw something like the One Ring and I want to, you know, play out as many spells as possible. Let's see. Let us see. My opponent's under extreme pressure here. Ur out of the yard, not a pro not a not a not an option. Something with Yorion, not an option. My opponent basically has to kill the bombardier, and that's uh, not exactly, you know, going to one here is not exactly great either. So hopefully, my opponent's in a lot of trouble. I really like how this game played out with how I set up the Pyroblast. Um, I got oofed, but and that was amazing, but I was lucky to cycle into Soul Land both games where that happened. So it's like, is it was it lucky that my opponent drew the oof, or was it lucky that I, well, unlucky for me that my opponent drew the oof, or was I lucky to find into, draw into, you know, um, the... The City of Traitors. I need to rip into a fetch land to even be in the game, I think. So, I don't know what my opponent's going for here, but so let's just see what's going on. Four drop off Zenith. Later outs, baby. So here's Ponder, which definitely works when trying to find um, a fetch land. That fetch land will give the opponent first uh, four life on uh, upon entering. Then you can fetch and get four mana. So yeah. Oh, it looks like my opponent missed stack the Ponder here. Opponent can gain four here, but yeah, that's not going to cut it. That is not going to cut it against double broadside bombardier getting in there. Yeah, okay, my opponent made a little bit of a mess up there. They had the chance to do more here, you know, play out some stuff. Stay in the game. Then on my turn, I can, you know, copy a broadside bombardier, get in there with double menace and the team. And then I can, sh you know, shoot for 10 like we saw the previous game. So, yeah, pretty sweet. Um, that's going to that's gonna do it for today. Um, I played against some reanimator. I got to show off a little bit of the strengths against that deck, a little bit of the weaknesses. Um, did not get super lucky on the die rolls. I mean, if you're going to win a tournament with Mono Red Prison, you need to be a bit better on the die rolls. But that's just, you know always going to be a factor, but it's worth mentioning when evaluating the deck. Um, I will say I like this deck a lot. I'm heavily considering playing it on Sunday, and uh, yeah, you, sh you should as well if you enjoy this kind of magic. I'll make sure to update the guide, and if you check it out, I'm very happy. If you don't, no, not, a worry, not a worry at all. I'll just see you back here for the next video, which is going to be awesome. Alright guys, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.